what we have at the screen before us are the TCAP data for the state of Tennessee um, for the year 2014 and 2015 and this is school level data as you scroll across which I just did there you see information related to the school uh, we have right here in columns C and D and also in terms of the school system or the district information for each school as well as as we scroll across the subject area tests that were administered in each school uh, the grade in which that is uh, covered by those schools and also then the information that's reported here in terms of student performance are the percent who scored below a basic level of understanding for each subject matter test percent of students who scored at the basic level percent of students who took the test in that school who were deemed to be proficient and the percent who were deemed to be advanced in their performance and what we see here also then is proficient and advanced combined together percent of students who were at least at the proficient level and that's oftentimes what people report when they talk about school performance for TCAP uh, information in terms of the growth that we see here in column L uh, is just a change in proficient and, and uh, advanced um, information in column K from one year to the next and also then we see that uh, there are asterisks in several of these cells where data are, are entered and there's a key here that indicates what those asterisks refer to in essence it's missing data but the data are missing for several different reasons and that's why they code missing data with uh, three different asterisks so let's go back to where we see the first piece of information here and when we look at the TCAP data itself it's not really ready in an, uh, to be brought into a stat package uh, to create a data set for statistical analysis uh, first of all what we notice here is that the grades that are covered uh, we have more than just high schools that are in these uh, data you notice here for the very first uh, uh, few cells here we see that it's 9 through 12 but then we see 3 through 8 and so on um, and what we notice then that the different subject area tests there are different names for the subject area when we look at the 9 through 12 test versus the tests that are given in for example in eighth grade um, so in that case what we'll see is algebra 1 algebra 2 bio 1 chem 1 English 1 2 and 3 those are the name of tests that are only administered uh, in the high schools which is the information that we're interested in we're not interested in the math science reading and language tests and those are the names given to the subject area tests for the elementary school uh, versions of the TCAP in addition to having schools that are more than that are not um, high schools in these data the data also are not ready for us to bring into a stat package uh, because if we look at the information for example for Anderson County High School it's spread over several different rows when we think about the notion of constructing a flat file for data analysis whether it's in Excel or in a stat package we have similar information that's reported in a given column that's a variable and then we have similar information for each case reported in just one row uh, but what we have here for Anderson County is information for that high school that one school that's reported across several rows what we would like to do now is to organize this information in such a way then that the uh, information for Algebra 1 for high school is then followed in the same row by the information for Algebra 2 for that high school then by Bio 2 in that high school all the way through to English 3 in that high school so all these rows then would be put into one single row for that given uh, that given school uh, so what we're going to need to do then is sort this information and if we sort it by subject area test we're not going to have to worry then about bringing in to our data um, information for schools that are not high schools which is what we're working with so let me first of all create another worksheet here in this Excel file and you notice it's just one that is here just the original data worksheet I'm gonna click on this uh, this plus sign in the circle and whenever I do that it adds a new worksheet to the file just in other words like adding a piece of paper on top of what we had before let's go back to the original data I'm gonna click and highlight all of the uh, columns that have information data information I'm not going to click and, and bring in then the key uh, that's not going to be data I'm going to do a copy come over to our sheet 
Now there actually are several um, options we have in terms of pasting this information into a new sheet. I'm going to do a right mouse button in column A1 and I'm just going to choose the very first option, paste. Now when I do that, you notice what happens here. It brings over the information exactly as it was in the previous uh, sheet. It has you know, the, the coloring or the, the, um, um, uh, the fill, the font we see here, even you know, font color, uh, all, even the column widths are exactly what they were before. Now this does, while it looks nice um, aesthetically, it does pose a problem for manipulating or working with the data especially in terms of, for example, sorting that we're going to do. So let me undo that paste. And instead, what I'm going to do is choose a, use the right mouse button. I'm going to choose the second option for paste, to just paste values. It's going to paste only the information that we saw in the cells uh, in TCAP data sheet. It's not going to bring in the formats that we saw that were used to make that uh, TCAP data sheet look nice. So just click that and now you notice here all the columns are the same width. Uh, we see that um, you know there's no fill. It's all the same um, font, font size, font color, and so on. And this is what we want to work with. Now let me first of all go ahead and delete that very first row. That's information we don't need. There we go. Now I deleted the row, not just the information. And I'm going to sort this information by subject area test. And the process that I'm going to use here is once it's sorted, I'm going to create a separate new worksheet for English 1 data only, and then a separate worksheet for English 2 uh, data only. Um, and those are the two uh, subject area tests I'm going to use to um, demonstrate uh, um, bringing information into SPSS in a later tutorial, tutorial that uh, is data importing for SPSS uh, and also uh, data set creation in SPSS. So let me now, once I have that highlighted, come up under data. I'm going to click on the sort button and you notice first of all it automatically checks my data has headers. If you have the very first row of information or just column headings then we want this checked. If we uncheck it, you notice it highlights that and it's going to sort that information along with all the other information in the rows below it. But we instead want that information to stay on top. It's the label for each column. Come over on the very first down arrow button next to sort by and I'm going to sort by subject area test. Click on subject and now click OK and notice it alphabetically organizes it so now all Algebra 1 information is together. Scroll down a little further we get to Algebra 2 information. Scroll down even further we'll see Biology 1 information and so on. And this is exactly what we want. Let me go ahead and double click on this tab and I'm going to label it sorted data so I know what this information is on this tab. It's the same data we see in TCAP uh, data ta uh, worksheet but now it's sorted. It's in a different form or format than what we had before. And now this is information that I'm going to be able to uh, bring into uh, an SPSS work uh, stats package but first to do so I'm going to create a separate sheet for each subject area test that I want to bring in to SPSS. So now we have the data that are sorted. We also then have, we stripped out information that is um, 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 formatting and so on. Let's now bring this information into separate worksheets, one for each subject area test that we're interested in bringing into an SPSS data set. So I'm going to add a new worksheet here. And that new worksheet is going to be information for English 1. So let me scroll on down here to find where English 1 data are, and we're right past it, there we are. A little farther, there. So I'm going to click and drag to highlight the cells that contain information for English 1. there. A lot of high 
high schools in the state of Tennessee. Come down a little farther. Oh, there we go. We're right past it. So there. Now that's the last row then of information for English 1. Uh, with the cursor over top of the highlighted area somewhere, right mouse button, copy, come over to sheet 2, and I'm going to put this information beginning in cell A2. And I'm just Whether I choose the paste or paste values, it doesn't matter, since I've already stripped out in on the sorted data page all the formatting information, get the same uh, uh, the same information reported. And right there is the information for just English 1. Come back to the sorted data, and I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to highlight then the column headings, copy those, and bring these into and paste them into that sheet. And I'm going to go ahead before I forget what this information is, is that's going to be English 1 information. Okay? So if we scroll down just to make sure that is just English 1, that I haven't got any extra information here that I don't need. Yeah, that's all English 1 information right there. Okay? Now, what I can do here is get rid of information that I don't want. For example, we don't need the subject test anymore, so I'm going to delete that column. We don't need grades 9 through 12, the grade level served by the school, because they all are high schools. And as you scroll down here, you should have noticed then that there, there's no variation in terms of that information for that column. So I'm going to delete that. And while we may want to keep the growth information in, I'm just going to delete that since we're not going to use that information at all. Right there. Now we see the information is all organized for English 1. And I'm going to do the exact same process for English 2. Go ahead and copy and paste. I first of all created a new sheet. And I'll go ahead and call this English 2 while I'm down here. Okay. Go back to the sorted data. Let's go ahead, since it's already highlighted, Let's copy the column headings, paste, and now let's actually go back to the sorted data and find English 2 data. Right there we started it. that information, bring it over to the English 2 sheet, again delete the information for subject area test column and grade column and also the growth column, that information. And now we have the information for English 2 that is um, have been sorted and if we scroll down we would have seen then that all the information is just for only English 2. Now that we have English 2 data all in one worksheet by itself and English 1 data all in worksheet, a worksheet by itself, what we need to do now is take care of these asterisks. This is now character information and what if we bring this character information in it's going to treat the whole variable as though it's character variable and in a stat package you won't be able to do any statistical analysis with that variable. So we have to indicate that these are missing data values. Uh, that we see here. Now one thing I have not mentioned thus far, uh, you notice we're creating a lot of extra sheets here in this work in this Excel uh, uh, file and the reason for that is is I never want to make any modifications to the original data. In the event that I made a mistake in terms of sorting or whatever uh, for the data that we have here, I can always go back to the original TCAP data that we have here and start all over again the same thing whenever I sort it for each stage now I have a separate sheet that all the information is just sorted but nothing else is done to it so if I've made a mistake in terms of copy and pasting to English 1 or English 2 I can go back then to the step that I knew I did I performed properly that being the sorted data and start again from there so at each stage then in terms of my data manipulation I re really create a separate uh, sheet within my uh, my Excel file that way I can go back and and 
go back to the sheet where I know I did not make any mistakes and start from that point again. So always keep your original data um, in its original form without touching it. Let's go to English 1. So what we're going to need to do is to handle this missing data information. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is take the column information in terms of schools, the name of the districts and also the names of the schools, and I'm going to paste it a little bit off to the, the right here. I'm going to do the same thing for the headings we see here of these variables, 4% uh, below the performance data. And go ahead and actually that would be right there in, co in uh, beginning in column P. And what I'm going to do here now is use what's referred to as an if statement in order to recode or replace these values over here that currently are asterisks. For example, if I see three, um, uh, three asterisks in a given cell, I want to give that a missing data value of 999.9. .9. Well, why would I choose 999.9 .9 and designate that as missing data? Well, if we look at the data that we have here, first of all, the data are out to one decimal point, and we also see then the maximum value of percent would be 100%. So we can go up to the hundreds column. In that case, then, uh, we use all the columns of information that the data could use within our, our, our data set, but we use nonsense values. You know, we can't get a value for any one of these cells of a, above 100%. Um, and in that case, 999.9 .9 I know is missing data cause, because the uh, variable cannot possibly take that given value. So we use values that are very high, that are nonsense, in order to assign them numerically as missing data. And I'm getting this ready for SPSS. For some other stat packages, maybe what we want to do is make the cell to be just blank, or we want to put a period in for missing data. Um, so you have to look at what the stat package you're working with, how it tends to uh, like to, to use um, what code for or what information for missing data. But for uh, SPSS that we're going to be using in this class, uh, it likes to use uh, uh, nonsense values uh, for missing data. So let's go to what would be then the first cell for percent below. And what we're going to do here now is use an if command equal to start your formula if open parenthesis and I'm going to have equal if the cell percent below is equal to and I'm going to put in double quotations three asterisks and in that case what we see here then um, is if it's character information we have to uh, put it uh, you know, within uh, double quotation marks. So it's going to ask, first of all, is the information in cell E2 three asterisks? If it is, after the comma, this is what response would be if it's true, enter instead 999.9, .9, comma, but what if it's false? If it's false, then just enter that same information that is in that cell. We don't want to replace 6.2 close parenthesis hit enter so you notice here since that information in col in cell uh, e2 for Anderson uh, County High School percent below basic is a numeric value it just kept then the information in six uh, six point two and I can then copy this formula all the way down through other cells now you notice where we had three asterisks it did indeed replace the information as 999.9. .9. If it did not have three asterisks, or any asterisks rather, it just reported then the numeric information. But you notice we have one asterisk here that's reported. And the reason for that is um, it didn't know what to do with information that had one asterisk, asterisk within a particular cell. So we need to now modify the formula to indicate well, what should you do if it has two asterisks? What should we do if it instead has three asterisks? Because if it only has one asterisk here, it's going to report that information that is in cell E4, right over here, and that is an asterisk. So we want to also recode cells that have two asterisks and cells that have one asterisk in them. 
Let's go back to the formula. Let me do, go ahead and delete where I copied it down into. Go back to the formula. I'm going to embed here. If E2 does not equal three asterisks, which is what it does here, it's a false um, decisions returned, I'm going to now use an other if statement. If, open parenthesis, E2 equals, and in double quotations, two asterisks, comma, then report 999.8, slightly different values since the way which the data are entered in uh, in the TCAP file here, there are different types or reasons for missing data. If it's still false, enter in the value that is in cell E2, close parenthesis. Now if I do that and copy it down, it's going to now correct for any information that has two asterisks in it. But you notice we still have cells with only one asterisk in them. So now I need to have another embedded here um, if command, if statement, if this information in cell E2 is equal to one asterisk, comma, then put in 999.7, a slightly different missing data code, but still nonsense in terms of what the information is, comma, if it's not, then now we port information in cell E2, close parenthesis. Now as we copy this down, what we'll notice then is all that information, that is three asterisks, where one asterisk now is replaced with missing data, codes that we have designated. And I'll copy this down to the range of data that we have here. So you notice now we've recoded all that information and I'll just scroll up to make sure there is no character information remaining in any of these cells. It's all numeric. good to me. It looks like we handled the problem that we had. We can also do the same thing for the other columns that we have here. So I'm just going to copy and bring that across. And you notice once I have in the very first cell that information properly entered, as I bring this across it's going to increment then uh, from E to G, uh, F rather, to G to H to I. So now that same formula will work in all of those, uh, all those cells. And I'm going to click now and drag all the way down to the bottom. And right there we have it. All that information now has been recoded. So we have no asterisks now included in any of these cells. One last thing I'll do here just to make this really nice and tidy, and this is not, not necessary, is with all that data information recorded, notice it's not all left right justified, some is left justified. I like to have it all look the same, and we tend to right justify numeric information, and now that looks a little bit nicer. Okay? Now, we can't bring this information directly into SPSS as we see here. What we're going to do instead is create a separate sheet for English 1. And I'm going to type down here English 1. I like to call this the clean data. It's all cleaned up, ready to import into SPSS. Come back to English 1, and I'm going to go and highlight the columns where the new information is, where I've done the recoding. Copy come back over to English 1 clean. Now if I do a paste of just the very first paste option, it's going to now not know what to do with some of this information because what we have here are our formulas. And now I've messed up the cell reference that were used for um, executing those formulas. So I don't want to bring the formulas over here. What I, do, what I want to do is bring the result of those formulas. So 
copy and I'm going to choose values. These are the values that we have here. And again, I like to, just my way of keeping my numeric data always right justified, something that I just like to do aesthetically right there. And now we have the information exactly how we need it. Now this worksheet we can import directly into SPSS in this format if we do one more thing. I'm going to enter in an extra row between the data and also the variable name at the top or the variable label description and I'm going to choose a short name that will be used in SPSS for referring to this information each column and instead of system number it's a long variable name I'll make it sysno I will call system name sysnm for name school number school name I'm gonna now this is actually English 1 information ing one underscore and I'll just type B for basic uh, below uh, that should be BB below basic the next will be English one basic the next will be English one proficient the next is English one proficient and advanced Oh, that should just be advanced, I'm sorry. And the next is English 1 proficient and advanced. We have to give each of these separate names to distinguish them from English 2 information. Okay? And then now I can go ahead and delete then this information we have here for the very first row. Now this information is in the format that we need to import it directly into um, SPSS. I'm going to do the same thing for English 2. So I will have an English 2 clean sheet, but on the English 2 tab we have here, I'm going to also then do the recode out in the margins. Now, as you can see here, I've created a separate sheet now for English 2 cleaned. And if we look at the very top, you know, the only thing that's going to be different in terms of the variable names is since this is English 2 data, it's, I've got ang2 instead of ang1 for each of these. And this will distinguish then that this information is below basic for English 2 as compared to the information on the sheet that's English 1 clean. This is information for English 1 test scores below basic. So this now is information in the in the format that we need for bringing into Excel, uh, into SPSS rather from Excel. And let me go down here um, again. My own idiosyncrasies. I like to have all of my numeric data that are right justified. So let me go ahead and do that very quickly. There, I should have done this before I started this section here. So now we have all the information that's right justified also. So these two sheets now, English 1 clean and English 2 clean, are exactly the way we need them in terms of uh, the formatting and the information that's included. One last step that we're going we're to take here is we want to sort this information. So it's sorted first of all by system number and then by school number. Because so, we're going to merge our two files in a stats package by those two key variables and what stat packages like is to then to have them ordered from low to high on both of those variables. So I highlight the data, come up to data tab, click on sort, and again my data has headers, the variable names have at the top. Sort by, first of all, by system number, and then I'm going to add an extra level here for my sort, and within each system I'm going to sort by school number. So it's going to put all the information for system two, tw uh, 10 together, all for 20 together, 
all for 50 together and then within each is going to now sort from low to high on school name within system 10 sort from low to high within system 20 by school number sort from low to high in terms of school number for system 30 all the way down through so it's doing sorting at two levels let's do the same thing for the English clean data English one clean data rather highlight the data come up to data sort sort first of all by system number then the second level I'm going to sort by system name and click OK now I'm going to save this and you notice I already given it a different uh, file name I put a 2 at the end to distinguish this from the uh, the original data I keep the original data file as it is and never touch it so any modification then I create a new file for but now the data are in the format we need from bringing into SPSS and the process that we will use here now when we bring information to SPSS import it is we can import this information for English 1 as one separate small data set and then create a sep second se a separate data set of English 2 and then we can merge those two data sets together and we can only merge those two data sets together if there are variables that indicate cases for each of, this, of those two data sets that are identical variables. So system number and school number have the same name as well as the same values for the same cases um, within each of these two small data sets. So at this point we're all finished getting the data ready in Excel and this is when we want to then import it into SPSS. Each one of those one file at a time so one data set for English 1 one data set for English 2 and then the process after that would be to merge the two data sets together in SPSS